Hello, congregation, family, and friends. I pray that all is well with you today. If you're watching this live, here we are on the first Sunday of January 2019. If you're watching this on a replay, well, I hope that your New Year's was a good one. We are going to talk today about the heart. The heart, the most important organ in all of the body, the heart. I've titled my message today, It's Time for a Spiritual EKG. You know, when we speak of the heart, there's so many things that come to mind and so many phrases that we use. For instance, we can go to a doctor and he can examine us and see if our heart is diseased or not. We all know people that have big hearts. When we say something to maybe a loved one, we say to them, I love you with all of my heart. When we're being sincere about something, we say, I feel it or I'm expressing it from the deepest part of my heart. I appreciate you from the deepest part of my heart. The heart always seems to come back in the conversation. Do you know why? The heart is the central item and organ in the body. Consider this. You can go blind or deaf and still live. You can have a foot or a leg or an arm amputated and you can still live. You can lose a kidney and still live. But if you lose your heart, you're dead. If you lose your heart, you stop breathing. No heart means no blood pumping through the veins, no blood getting into the body, the body dies. So the heart obviously is critically important from a medical standpoint and also just for life. But I want to look at a passage today where Jesus is talking about the heart and not so much from a physical point of view, but from a spiritual point of view. And I call this, as I said, it's time for a spiritual EKG. If you're watching this live, this is the first Sunday of a new year, and it's a good time for us to check our hearts and to make sure that we are right with God and that we are living a God-glorifying life. Now, we're going to look at a passage here, and I'm going to read the whole passage. Uh, we don't have time in this one message to get all of this passage because it's much too deep. However, I want to read the whole passage because it will give you a background and an understanding of what we're talking about here. So we are in Mark chapter 7. I'm going to read from verses 14 down through verse 23, and then we're going to go back and unpack this a little bit. It says here in Mark 7, beginning in verse 14, After he called the crowd... To him again, he began saying to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the man which can defile him if it goes into him. But the things which proceed out of the man are what defile the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples questioned him about the parable. And he said to them, are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not go into his heart, but it goes into his stomach and then is eliminated. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he was saying that which proceeds out of the man, that's what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile a man. That is a heavy passage. And what we need to do today is we're going to go through this checklist and make sure where our hearts are in relationship to what God is saying. Now, a little background. When Jesus was talking here and he was saying, there's nothing that defiles a man that goes into him. If you recall in the Old Testament, in Leviticus chapter 11, there is a list of foods that can and cannot be eaten. They're called clean foods and unclean foods. And the Israelites were to pay attention to what foods they can have and what foods they cannot have. There's even people today, and I know people today, even today, that pay attention to that list on Leviticus 11, and whatever it says they cannot eat, they will not eat. But what Jesus is saying, because he came, down, he came to fulfill the law, and that was part of the law, the, the, the clean and unclean food, because he was saying here that nothing that gets taken into the body defiles a man. And so immediately, that's why it says here, thus he declared all foods clean. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on that because that's not the main point of what I want to talk about today. But it is interesting in case you come across or in case maybe you yourself, there are certain foods you stay away from. 
or there's certain foods you, you think are clean and unclean. Jesus is saying here, nothing of what we take in is a defilement. Nothing is a sin that we're eating because of the times that we live in. Remember in Acts chapter 10, I believe, remember when Peter was in Joppa and remember he had that vision of the sheet coming down with all of the animals on it. And he was having a fit because he knew that some of those animals were clean and unclean. What did God say to him at that point? He said, there is no more clean and unclean. Everything is okay. Everything is to be eaten. And so even Peter, who grew up in the Old Testament and understood the Old Testament law and served with Jesus all those years, had to realize that God was pronouncing everything clean. So the only thing that Jesus is doing here is explaining that nothing that we take in, nothing that we eat, Nothing that we ingest defiles us. Why? He explains it why. If we look at verse 19, why does it not defile a man? Verse 19, because it doesn't go into the heart. It goes into the stomach. It gets processed and it gets eliminated through the body. So anything that we eat is not sinful. Anything that we eat is not a defilement. So that's the first part that he explains. But see, the disciples come to him, and they're not sure what he's talking about. And I must tell you, if I was if I was walking with Jesus too, I may not always know what he was talking about. Jesus was deep. Jesus was deep. Not only was he eternal God, he wrote the Bible, but then he, he wrote it in such a way, and God wrote the Bible in such a way where we have to search the scriptures daily. We have to read and study the Bible. You can't just open up a passage and read the Bible and say, oh, that's what it means, and close the book and go off and believe that. There has to be harmony when you do Bible study and so on. So imagine you're a disciple. Jesus just said this in the midst of a crowd. He just said this to the people, and he's saying, nothing that you eat is a defilement to you. Now remember, he is talking to the crowds, and many in the crowd, if not all, are already paying attention to this Old Testament series of messages. And, and rules and regulations that they have, the commandments. And so they already know we shouldn't be eating certain foods and other foods we can eat. Jesus is coming along and he is obliterating that. But he's got a bigger point, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. He says here, he says in verse 20, and let's pick this up. He says, he was saying, that which proceeds out of a man, that's what defiles a man. And he's not talking about elimination. He's not talking about waste. We, he already took care of that. It's not the food. It's not anything that you're ingesting because that goes through your stomach, through the intestinal areas, out it goes. But it's what comes out of the man. That is what defiles the man. Now, here's the part where we all need to be convicted, okay? You and me both. I read that list pretty quick, but I want us to see what exactly Jesus is talking about. Look with me in this list and be honest with yourself, okay? Because all of us are, are, we have sins that we commit because none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're made perfect in Christ. But as long as we have this sinful body, as long as we have a body that lusts after sin, even though our soul is eternal, even though our soul it has eternal life and we've been forgiven of our sins, we still have a body that lusts after sin. We still have a mind that thinks things. We still say things with our mouth that we shouldn't say. And so while we can clearly say, I'm a child of God, I have eternal life, we don't have eternal life yet in the sense that we have a resurrected body and all the sin has been removed from us. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for our sins past, present, and future. He died for the sins you committed yesterday, the sins you're committing today, and the sins you will commit tomorrow. He paid for all of those sins. But see, Jesus gives us a checklist, and I don't know about you, but every time I read through the list, I start looking at all the things in this list that I am still sinning in, the areas I'm sinning about, the things that I'm thinking, the words that are coming out of my mouth. And I want to tell you, it is time for a spiritual EKG in this new year as we start a new year, as we make a recommitment to Christ and to the church and to each other as a church family and anyone else who's watching. You make the commitment to Jesus Christ, and here's a good place to start. Are any of these things in your life right now? Let's look through them here. Verse 21 of Matthew, of Mark 7. From within... Out of the heart of man, and before we go this, go through the list, remember what it says in Jeremiah 17, 9. 
The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart of man is wicked. Remember, I said at the beginning, the heart is the central organ to the body physically. It's protected through the lungs and the rib cage. You don't have a heart. If your heart is damaged or your heart stops beating, you have no life. And so these things that are coming out of the heart, it's not only really important for us to have a heart physically, obviously, to just stay alive. But it's also important to see what's coming out of our heart because our hearts in Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above what? All things, not some things, all things. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know who can know our heart? God and God alone. See, I don't know your heart. You don't know my heart. And to be honest, I don't even know my own heart. I don't know what I'm capable of thinking and saying and doing. And it's all coming out of the heart. And thank God I have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank God that, that, <laughs> that I have someone who's paid for all these sins that I'm committing and will be committing. Let's go over this list. I'm going to go over it carefully. And I want you to see, make your own little checklist. See if any of these things are either in your life or they're, you're planning them to be in your life. Look at this list, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed... Number one, evil thoughts, evil thoughts, nasty thoughts, bad thoughts, thoughts of hatred towards someone, thoughts of lust maybe towards someone, evil thoughts. How is your mind? What are you thinking about? Are you focusing on good things like Philippians 4 tells us, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are beautiful, whatever things are right, that's what you focus on. Or... Are you focusing on bad things? Are you focusing on things of the world? Are you focusing on this, the temptations of the world? Are you focused on money or something like that? What are you lusting after? We have to be very careful about our thoughts. Next one, fornications. Anybody? Anybody fornicating? Have you fornicated before? Are you in a situation now where you are fornicating? You better stop. This is on the list. Don't do it. Don't do it. Next one says thefts. You steal anything lately? Let me explain thefts to you. When we talk about thefts, I'm not just talking about boldly going into a store and trying to rip them off and, and get out of there with something. Yes, that is theft. But you know how insidious theft can be? Listen to this. When we think of theft, we think of retail theft or you know you steal a car or you go into a convenience store and you hold them at gunpoint and you're stealing something. But you know what else theft can be? Theft can be if you have an employer and your employer gives you a half hour for lunch and you take 45 minutes. You stole 15 minutes from them. And unless you're planning to work 15 minutes after your day to make up for that time, you stole 15 minutes. If your employer says to you, you need to be here and on the job at 8 o'clock, but every day you come in at 8.05 or 8.10 because you had to stop at Starbucks, you have now stolen productive time from your employer. Do you see how insidious theft can be? And that's why God is telling us, you better search your hearts. You better do a spiritual EKG. We need to make sure the hearts are healthy. And so if you're thinking right now, well, I haven't stolen a car. And I, and I don't go into stores with guns and hold people up, and I don't beat up old people on the street, you must steal in some way. We all do. It's on the list. We're all capable of theft. Next one says murders. You want to murder anyone? Do you think someone, do you hate someone so much that you wish they were dead? Or you just say, I just want to kill that person. Just saying something like that is coming out of your heart. And it's coming through your mouth because it came through your mind. It went from the heart to your mind to your mouth and out. Oh, I'm so mad I could murder them. Now, that's just a phrase you're saying. But what is your real intent? Do you really want to murder someone or hurt someone or destroy someone? Here's another one. Adulteries. If you are married, commit yourself to your spouse. That's it. No adulteries. No adulteries. The Bible says if a man looks on a woman with lust, he's already committed adultery with her. Ladies, it's the same for you. If you look upon a man with lust in your heart, it's the same thing. Sin is sin is sin. Are you getting uncomfortable with the list? I'll bet you are. So am I. But he's not done yet. He's just getting started. Look at verse 22. 
Deeds of coveting. Deeds of coveting. What does that mean? I want that house. Oh, I wish I had a car as nice as you. Look at your ring. I wish I could have jewelry like that. I want that. That's what I want. I'm going to work for that. You're coveting something. Oh, he's got a beautiful wife. I want her. You start coveting things. If you have any kind of coveting in your mind, remember one of the Ten Commandments is what? Thou shalt not covet. What? Thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's property, thy neighbor animal, so on. It goes down the list. You can add that to modern society. You should not be coveting anything. You should be grateful and glad for what God has for you and thank God for what you have. Instead of coveting things, I want that. Next thing says wickedness. That sounds like a broad thing, wickedness. Anything that is not right, anything that is not holy, anything that is not proper is wicked. Okay? Let's be honest. If you're not doing things God's way, if we're not obeying this word, if we're not paying attention to his commandments, if we're not living as Jesus taught us to live, then there's an opportunity there for us to be wicked, for us to do wicked things, to think of wicked thoughts. Deceit is the next one. You ever try to deceive someone? You tell them a half truth. You don't tell them the whole story. Or you want to hide something because of, you know, you're going to go underground and do something that you shouldn't be doing. You're deceiving people. Deceit, is that on your checklist? Is that something that you need to deal with? Next one, sensuality. <laughs> sensuality can go along with lusting sensuality if you're sensual towards the wrong person if you if you are having relations with someone and you're not married you're falling into not only that sensuality and fornication and adultery all of that is mixed together we have to be careful of that here's one that all of us all of us are guilty of envy envy you ever see someone or something and you say man i, I envy you See, if we're if if we are if we're complimenting someone, that's one thing. I like your clothes. I love the house you live in. Uh, you have such a great marriage. But when you start envying, you go past and beyond just a simple compliment or something that is in that is just an innocent comment. You envy someone to the point where then you can fall very easily into coveting something. I envy you. I want to be like you. You know what? God made you to be you. He made me to be me. All of us are individuals as God made us. I don't want to envy someone else. I've got enough going on in my own life. I don't need to envy anyone. Is that on your list? Slander. That's the next one. Slander. When's the last time you said something bad? Not to that person's face. But maybe you told it to your best friend. Maybe you texted something bad about another person. You're slandering them. You're ruining their reputation. You're saying something about them that just isn't true. Slander. Slander. A lot of slander cases wind up in court. These high-profile ones, you slandered me. You defamed me, so I'm going to sue you. We have to be very careful what we say because it's all coming out of the heart. It comes out of here. Goes to here, to here, to here, out. So you say something that you shouldn't say about someone, whether it's an envious thought, but you slander them. we got to be careful of that. Here's another one. Pride. Come on now. Who am I talking to out here? Pride. All of us have an issue with pride. When you think you're better than someone else. When you think you know everything. When you feel superior to someone else. I'm doing better in life. I'm nicer looking. I have a nicer looking spouse. I have more money than you. I'm prideful. I can't be corrected. Don't you come at me and correct me. Don't tell me that I'm wrong about something because why? I have pride. I'm not humble. I'm prideful. I hold myself up. My head's up in the air. I am prideful because I'm me. I'm somebody special. Last thing, foolishness. That can go all kinds of places. Foolishness. How many times do we see God in the Bible and Jesus say, you're a fool? 
You're a fool for doing the things you do, for believing the things you do. If you fall in line with the world and you do a lot of things that the world says is okay, you're a fool. The Bible says if you don't believe in God, you're a fool. So we have to, when you look at all of these things, are you uncomfortable yet? How many of these things on this list are you guilty of right now as you're watching this video? How many? You having an adulterous affair? Are you prideful about something? Who or what are you envious about? Have you deceived someone lately? Have you stolen something? Are you, you see, God is showing us here. And obviously there's many, many more things that we can learn from this. We're just skimming the surface here. But if, let's wrap up this and then we'll talk a little bit. It says here in verse 23, all these evil things proceed from within and defile a man. So it's not what you eat. It's not what you take in that makes everything bad. It's what comes out of you. It, what comes out of you. Now, I, because I believe in transparency and I believe in being honest for whoever's watching, because I am far from perfect. I will confess to you that sometimes uh, I use salty language. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. Usually it comes in, in, a, in a fit of anger or frustration. Things blurt out of me. I say things I shouldn't say. And I immediately have to repent to God. And I thank God that he has forgiven me and that I'm forgiven of that sin. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm still being foolish and I'm still being uh, irresponsible. And for me, someone who was called to preach and teach the gospel, and then I'm turning around and once in a while I'm using language that should never be used. That's on me. That's a personal fault that I have. It's something that I wrestle with. It's something that goes through me and I have to repent before God. So can I look at this list and say, oh my, there's some things on here that I do and I shouldn't be doing them. It's time for me to have a spiritual AKG, EKG and it's time for you. We cannot mess around anymore with God. We've got to be serious. If we claim to be Children of God, we want to do things God's way. If we want to do what he's called us to do, we better get serious about things. And we need to look ourselves in the mirror and say, God, you've given me a list of things here. Now, can I go through all of these things and say, yes, I honestly, I have evil thoughts. I am envious of people. I, I do use a salty language. I am prideful. I'm selfish. And we could look at all these things. Are you being foolish? Are you living a fool's life? Are you proclaiming that Jesus is your Lord and Savior on one hand, and then you turn around and you're living in the world? Are you doing that? Are you living a compromised life? What is your heart condition right now? How is your heart right now? You may be perfectly fine physically. You may go to your doctor. The last doctor exam that I had, the doctor checked my heart, and my heart is fine. No murmurs. There's nothing going on. I have a clear heart, and I thank the Lord for it. But God looks at my heart spiritually, and you know what he sees? Disease, ugliness, sin, rebellion, pride, bad language. He sees all those things. And because our hearts are desperately wicked, above anything else, and we're deceitful, we need a spiritual EKG. We need a cleansing. We need Jesus to transform our hearts from what they are now to what they should be. That's what we need. And so my challenge to you today, as it is for me, I'm going through this list and I'm saying, Lord, if there's anything on this list that needs adjustment, that I need to change in my life, that I need to rearrange, that I need to eliminate from my life. Lord, come into my life and change this in me because I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't want to be slanderous. I don't want to be prideful. I, I, I don't want to be envious. I don't want to have evil thoughts coming out of me. I don't want to even think about murder or even being so angry at someone that I want someone to be dead. Because then I'm falling into this and I am succumbing to the heart that I already know is diseased from sin. Are you hearing me? Is somebody getting this today? This word is for someone other than just me. We need a spiritual EKG and it's time today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. Today, right now, this message is going out and you need to examine your heart 
the same way that I need to examine my heart. Somebody hearing this right now, today, I want to read this list again. And I know it's painful, but we have to hear this. Listen to this. Jesus said, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. What comes out is what defiles the man. Watch. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed, here we go, evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. Have you had enough? All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. Wow. Okay, I, I surrender, Lord. I give up. I give up. I'm guilty. Over and over and over again, I'm guilty. So how do we resolve this? How do we, how do we apply this to our life? Does God have some, some things that we can do? You know, here's some things that here's a few questions that we need to ask ourselves as we finish this. Why do we often fail to see the poison of sin at work in our own hearts? Are we too afraid to like look at our own hearts? We don't want to see what it's there. It's a scary place. Our heart can be dark, sinister, foreboding, and it's evil. Why would we want to go to a place that frightens us? And so we stay away from the things we're examining and we're looking at in our hearts. When we look at a list like that, we don't want to see that. We don't want to acknowledge that possibly we have many of these problems. It's a scary place to go to examine your own heart. And so we try to avoid it. We need to think about why are we avoiding it? Are we too proud of our own image and respectability to admit the horrors that lie inside our own hearts. You see, only when we can see our sins clearly, only when we clearly acknowledge them, can we truly accept the gospel and the cleansing that it brings. Did you hear me? Once we look in our heart, once we see the evil is there, and once we realize that Jesus can cleanse us of all of those sins, once we do that, then we can only accept then the full gospel of forgiveness, the gospel of Jesus that says, I forgive all of your sins because when I look upon you, I don't see your sins. When God the Father looks upon me, my deepest desire is that he doesn't see Thomas laden with sins, but he sees the blood of Christ covering me, that all of my sins are forgiven. Therefore, I've earned eternal life. That's what I want God to see. But in the meantime, you see, my friends, we're still living in a sinful world and we still get temp temptations every single day, every minute of every day. Be careful what you watch, what you listen to, what you hear, what you invest your emotions in. Watch how you spend your time. Watch who you're hanging around with. Watch who is in your circle of family and friends. Be on the watch at all times, not for what they're doing, but what you're doing with them. What they're causing you to do starts from within. Remember, you and I, we have to take responsibility for our own sin. My heart is desperately wicked. It is dark. There's nothing I can do to have a good heart. Physically, yes, I can exercise and diet and keep my heart healthy. Spiritually, I cannot do a thing. Jesus has to do it. You see, if, if, we, don't, if we don't see the sin in our hearts, then the crucifixion and the death of Christ makes no sense and cannot benefit us. Did you hear that? If we can't see the sin in our own hearts and what we're doing, then what good is the crucifixion, the resurrection of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and the gospel of eternal life? What good is it? It's not. We must acknowledge, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. These things are in my life. These things I don't want in my life, Lord. Help me to get rid of that. Today, let's take an honest look at our heart. Let's use this passage as a beginning. And today, I encourage you, I implore you to do a spiritual EKG on your heart. How healthy is it? How many of these things here do you need to clean up or get rid of in your life? How many, how many residual effects are happening as a result of some of your thoughts? My challenge for myself and for you today and every day going forward is that we check our hearts. The same way we have heart-healthy food, and that's physical food to keep us healthy. Here's our spiritual food. Get into this every day. 
Read the Bible every day. Study it every day. Get your spiritual food. And your heart will be much healthier, not only physically, because it's physical food we eat, but spiritually, because we're eating spiritual food every day. Amen? If this message has blessed you, if it's helped you, please feel free to share it. This has nothing to do with me. This is the word of God going forward. And God has said that my word will not return void. It will reach all those people it tends to reach. Did it reach you today? Did it convict you today? Did it anger you today? That's okay. That's all right. Because you're hearing God's word. And maybe something of what was said here will help you. The other thing I would say is this. My church family knows that we are Bereans. Acts 1711 says the Bereans were more noble than others. What, were they better? No. But what they did was they searched the scriptures every day to make sure that what they were hearing was the truth. I encourage you to do the same. You owe it to yourself. Whether it's me, someone on television, radio, on internet, whatever church you belong to, whether it's one of the big preachers in the mega churches or a smallest little church, if you're hearing something from the word of God, you owe it to yourself to check it out and make sure that what you're hearing is the truth. Because, I, and I say this because I care, there's a lot of bad theology around. There's a lot of bad teaching. There's a lot of things that have absolutely nothing to do with this book that are being promulgated and being promoted as the gospel, and it's not. So be a Berean. Check it out for yourself. The last thing I want to leave you with before I say goodbye is this. We have a website, livinginharmonyministries.org, livinginharmonyministries.org. I invite you, just take a moment and stop by and see all the different things that we're doing for the individual and for churches. It's something that we're called to do, and we're not leaving. We're staying. We're doing what God has called us to do. And so if you would take a moment and stop by that site, livinginharmonyministries.org. And you know what? If it's not for you, if it's not for you, would you please share it with someone else? Because maybe someone else can help and someone else will, will need our services and our help. We're here for you. We're here to serve the body of Christ and we're happy to do it. And so I want to thank you for being part of this uh, Sunday message today. I pray that your heart is healthy, not just physically, but even more important, spiritually. I pray that today we've all been operated on. We have all had a spiritual EKG, and the Lord Jesus Christ has cleansed us of our sins, that these things can be eliminated from our life, and tomorrow we can go forward without some of this baggage and some of these sins that we've been having for so long. That is my prayer for you. Thank you for joining me. God bless you.